right, so welcome everyone. Um, yeah, this is the agenda. Um, so if we start with the update from the interchain team, uh, maybe Susana, do you have any anything you would like to talk about from the product side? Is Susana here? Sorry, maybe. No, Susana is not here. Okay. All right. Um, maybe she will join a bit later. Um, then I can talk a bit about the the engineering and protocol work. Uh, so currently, yeah, we are working on V7, trying to finish the the last uh, yeah loose ends. Um, uh, we are. Yeah, on the auto, for auto client refactor, we have the live client developer guide now. Uh, so if anybody would like to have a look at that, um, that feedback, that would be great. Uh, so we can improve it if there's uh, anything we can still improve there. So I have the link here. Um, so yeah, anybody interested in reading it, uh, would be great. Uh, we're trying to do some testing. Um, with the solo machine, uh, we yeah we contacted uh, crypto.com because they had um, a solo machine implementation, and um, we're gonna try to use that one. And we're also trying to find a way to to test uh, misbehavior. So that's a bit uh, work in progress. Um, for the upgrade to SDK forty seven, yeah we are um, yeah we are using the 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 RC the release candidate from the SDK now. Uh, we have to update our migration docs, which we will do this week. Uh, for the support of OC to ICS20, we have a feature branch which is ready for testing. So if anybody would also like to, is interested in this feature and would like to um, yeah, give it a try. Uh, yeah, there's the, that's the link to the, to the feature branch. So that's a bit... Yeah, and we need to write some documentation, but that's a, that's a small thing. Uh, so that's a bit the status of the work for V7. Uh, we are busy uh, trying to bump the version of the package of yeah the IBC Go package version to V7. And yeah, we have a bit of a dependency um, dependency chicken and egg problem uh, with the IBC Go depending on IBC test. And the other way around, um, and we have uh, yeah, Damian opened a PR in in IBC test uh, to bump um, uh, the dependency, and it would be great to have that PR merge in IBC test so that we can then import it in in in, in IBC Go. Um, I it, I took a look at that yesterday. Actually, um, it looked like the the CI job was failing due to some sort of like contention around that SQLite uh, database file. For some reason, we were still writing those to disk even in like the CI like jobs. So I reran it and it looked like all the tests are passing. Um, I, didn't, I don't think I remember if that PR was marked ready or if it was a draft, but um, okay. yeah, it might together. still be in draft. I'm not too sure, but um, I think we're actually already pointing to your branch of the uh, 47 upgrade and I think I targeted that branch let's see yeah VO 47 I've targeted that branch on this PR so I can mark it as ready for review cool yeah we can get that merged uh, right after this call okay sweet yeah I can update then for the latest commit on um, on the 47 branch and we should be pretty good then I think awesome sweet thanks cool thanks uh, Justin yeah so then yeah, then that should be done for the bump. And then once that that that's that's done, uh, we will create a release branch and probably tag um a beta three uh, tag for V7. Um yeah, and hopefully maybe next week uh, we will probably catch the first uh, release candidate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's about V7. Mm, any any questions? Uh, anything? Okay, if not, then to talk a bit about what's what's coming next. Um, yeah, so the next version will be uh, seven point one, uh, which will include um, 
local host connection, support for Western Light clients. Uh, so we're, yeah, the last um, last couple of weeks, uh, especially last week, uh, on the local host, um, yeah, we we had some some discussion. Uh, we were looking at um, at the the the, the original this, the the design that Aditya proposed, and that uh, Justin was working on. We also had a look uh, at um, at the PR from from Bo with local host client. Uh, we were trying to uh, weigh the pros and cons of, of uh, both approaches, and um, yeah, at the end of the week, uh, we kind of came to a decision to try to take a bit the the, the best of both approaches, um, um, and we will try to. Yeah, we're going to be working on that uh, this iteration. Um, the idea is that uh, in this approach, uh, still the relayer, uh, the relayer should, should still work um, uh, as 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 they they were going to work with the uh, with the solution that uh, Justin was working. Um, so there should not be changes there. Um, maybe Aditya, if you want to give any more details. Yeah, so as Carl said, it's kind of um, the relayers shouldn't shouldn't uh, have any any changes at all. Um, we're kind of taking the the uh, approach of having things go to to the client layer for for some of the verification, so that we don't have to build new verification methods for each um, for each new new version, but we're also taking the standardized local host connection from, from Justin's PR and and the the messages and the relayer changes. So um, that's kind of where things are, and we'll make things hopefully cleaner and and um, and yeah, uh, more more maintainable. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the status at the moment. Wasn't there one thing that we wanted to bring up about um, enabling it by default or right. enabling it manually through a, an upgrade handler? Yes. So um, as I think, I believe in in um, the current uh, just PR, I think that it's enabled by default, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that's kind of what we would, we would prefer is to kind of have things um, enabled by default. Uh, we were just wondering if there was any anyone on this call that, that had a strong reason for not doing that, or if we need to support the ability to disable this feature um, just so that we make the, the right decision on the product one. Anybody would have any opinion about that? Any preference? What do you lose if it's disabled by default? Then you just can't use localhost. And then developers oh, need to uh, You're manual. asking what it disabled by default. I mean, it just, um, given we're creating this feature, it makes sense to kind of have um, immediate automatic deployment um, rather than having to ask people to manually wire things in order to enable this feature. Okay, I see. And and from our side, there doesn't seem to be much of a, a downside for chains to enable this. Yeah, I was asking about the downside. So if there is none, then yeah, that's that's the answer. Okay, so then then Good. sorry, go ahead. Somebody somebody wanted to say something? No, I just said good. Okay. Dean, thank you. Okay, so, so then it would be fine just to enable by default. We're gonna have just an automatic migration that uh, enables by default. All right, cool. Then we'll do it like that. Uh, yeah, and then uh, yeah, support for some clients. Uh, we're also gonna start looking into that. Oh, sorry, uh, one more thing on the loopback. So what's the what's the Time frame or ETA on that? 
Yeah, uh, so um, so we're starting to work on this. Uh, there's not a lot of work uh, for it to. Yeah, there's there's not not a lot of work. Uh, we have to do some some end-to-end -end testing and testing stuff like that. Um, but yeah, because we want to bundle this work together with the support for Wasm Light clients, then the the release um, yeah would come maybe. We, we're targeting for V7 like end of February. Um, so the 7.1 would come definitely afterwards. Uh, but I, 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 at the moment, because I, I, we still don't know exactly how much work uh, we will need to do on, on Wasm Light clients, mm, really cannot give a date and uh, of, of what this, when this could be released. Uh, but hopefully in a couple of weeks, we're gonna, yeah, now we're gonna start looking into Wasm Light clients as well. And in a couple of weeks, maybe we have a better idea of how much work that, that also is. And then we could probably give an, an estimate. Yeah, sorry to not be able to give up like a concrete or more specific answer, but at the moment, yeah, it's, it's a bit, uh, um, we need still a bit to do some, some, a bit more planning to know exactly when, a bit. Uh... Okay. All right. Thanks. So, yeah. Um, so then that's for V7.1. Uh, then there's one item here. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about this issue uh, that we had with the events uh, changing in Tendermint. And then this was. Uh, uh, making our or our, our end-to-end -end tests uh, failing in IBC Go, uh, and we were discussing uh, with the SDK team last week how, yeah, how we could try to find a way to, uh, yeah, um, uh, find these issues earlier so that, um, yeah, uh, not not so late as as it happened uh, with SDK forty-seven. Um, and we were talking about maybe having some kind of end-to-end -end tests uh, in this maybe in the CI of the of the relayers, and we wanted just to bring the topic here and and see, yeah, to discuss and and see what we could maybe do together. Um, we don't have any any clear suggestion or uh, idea, but yeah, we just wanted to discuss to see if there would be something that we could do. To try to yeah uh, find these problems earlier. I could weigh in there. From what I can tell, the the uh, the earlier, if you want to catch problems earlier, you need to catch the problems in the repositories that break dependencies, and it's almost never the relayers that break dependencies. Relayers have to adhere to dependencies. So if we just put some CI in the relayer, the CI will test with the latest version of Kaya or um, or SDK. And so on and typically the latest versions work but then the main or ongoing prs on those repos are the ones that break stuff uh, it maybe i'm misunderstanding something but it i i thought about this in the past and it, relayers are a bit late in the pipeline to catch things but i could be convinced otherwise also yeah, yeah. no i would i would pretty much agree with that um it doesn't seem like something that's easy to catch unless there's existing CI jobs like on the SDK side so that those PRs are kind of catching them while they're in flight. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the counterpoint from SDK and Tendermint is that um, there's no specification for the format of events, so they won't really add a CI job for testing against that. Yeah, the, the lack of specification is a good point, and we, we can think on how we can get around that by having some hacky solutions initially. Uh, I can also imagine some way making it work in the relayer, but the relayer would need to point to the main branch or the master branch of, of IPC Go and the main branch and master branch of SDK. And I don't, it's not really obvious to me. I'm definitely lacking knowledge of how those pieces will, could be tested from the relayer it's it's maybe feasible and maybe easier um so yeah I'm, I'm open to the idea it just doesn't sound like the most straightforward way to do it yeah mm. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's also a bit uh, of a problem because if, um, for IBC Go to be able to depend uh, on the latest SDK, we also need uh, sort of a latest tender mean. We also need a latest SDK that depends on it. And yeah, so it triples, triples down all the way, yeah, uh, from, from IBC Go to tender mean. So it's also maybe not something very simple to do, but yeah. There was a there was a chat that I was, was involved in recently with um, with the Gaia team where we were discussing the same thing. And from the tender mint level, we also want to push, uh, and we also want to push tests in, but directly into the tender mint repo. And again, directly into the Gaia repo. It's we may need to go towards some sort of all to all CI. Like every repo tests their repo's own latest version with the official version of the relayer. And then the relayer tests the latest version of the relayer with uh, the official the latest version being development versions uh, with the official versions of, uh, say, Gaia or our other chains, and potentially also CMD from IBC Go, which I think we do already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but but how how could that work? In, in, for example, if you want to run tests in Tender Mint, uh, I guess do you need to have a version of IBC Go with that latest Tender Mint? Uh, then or yeah, Tendermint would need to. I, I think a Tendermint no, node might be enough, but we do need to find a way to generate IBC relevant stuff. And at that, I don't know. It would, yeah, I would need to have the module, the IBC module. So it would need to link somehow with uh, with the IBC Go. Uh, it wouldn't need, yeah, maybe the CMD rebuild with, uh, yeah, I don't know actually. I'm, here is where I'm getting a bit stuck. So yeah yeah um all right it's, uh, it's easy to test tendermint events but ibc specific events in tendermint that's harder so yeah it's a good point yeah okay so maybe this is something to to continue discussing um maybe offline with uh, hermes tendermint the different teams yeah Right. Uh, I, I did start from the Hermes side to create a list of all the endpoints that the relayer needs. Um, the events are not specified though. So the events are the big missing part. We don't really know for sure what are all the events that the relayer needs. It's a bit of a, uh, it's a difficult question because we just parse them and as long as they work, we don't really know what they are. Uh, so we need we would need to work with the IBC Go team to detect exactly the, the, the what are the events and how they look like. Uh, but at the level of ABCI RPCs and GRPC RPCs, we have a complete list, like a comprehensive list of what Hermes relies on. And we also know what are the most uh, uh, slowest and what are the highest, uh, what are the um, unslowest ones. So what are the easiest ones to, to move away from? Okay. So then at least then one thing that you would like to know is exactly what events... Uh... Hermes depends on from IBC Go then? Uh, on yes. Formatting. Basically a complete list of all the IBC Go events or the core events at least, the channel connection and client. And then we can look at ICA or other stuff. But I think if, maybe we can even just start with the client. And if we can specify those in some format, wherever, uh, that could be a good start to also satisfy the, the SDK team maybe. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Let's... Um... I will, I will have a look at that and I will maybe follow up with you, Adi. Yeah. Um, I see a question here in the chat um, from Dan um, about having Hermes integrated in IBC test. Uh, and indeed, that's something that um, uh, IBC Go team and Hermes are going to be working on uh, this quarter. So hopefully by the end of the quarter, we will have Hermes also integrated in IBC test. That's awesome. Thanks for the update. Cool. <clears throat> All right, then, uh, yeah, two weeks ago, we also were talking about this issue with a, a huge transaction size that uh, got stuck. Um, finally, it was cleared, but yeah, we were discussing how to, how to prevent this uh, from happening. Uh, and I was wondering if there was any update. I know that Jacob was contacting Cosmo Station. I don't know if... Uh, if you had any updates about that, actually, um, I haven't gotten a reply. I will. I have uh, their CEO's contact on Twitter, and I'll send him a DM there because I, 
I did get a reply from their team member in the Osmosis Validators chat, but then I never got the actual information about the Max TX bytes. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, with, I'll, I'll follow up uh, with another person on Twitter. I think his name is Jay, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Okay. Cool. Then um, we'll hear um, when you when you have some some news. Cool. Thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Jacob. Yeah, for following on that. Oh, absolutely. All right. Then uh, Susanna is now here. Uh, Susanna, is there anything from product side that you would like to, to talk about? Um, maybe one thing to mention is that we are planning to update the IBC protocol website. Um, it's a bit old and maybe kind of hard to read. Um, so we want to, you know, like kind of have it a bit more easier to navigate and have information that's relevant to IBC in one place. So if you have like something specific that uh, you think might be useful there, then just uh, let me know. Um, yeah, right. I, I think that's probably. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thank you, Susanna. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, then um, coming back to to the protocol. Uh, yeah, Aditya uh, wrote um, a PR with um, the best practices for the memo field. Uh, so this is, oh, well, maybe Susanna, you can also talk about the memo field because you've been doing some work on this. Uh, Susanna, would you like to? Yeah. Um, so I, I guess the, the concern was um, if the memo field is, currently just a spring, a string, but if people want to perform an action based on the string and it's not specified, um, this could possibly lead to problems. Um, Osmosis have um, been using the memo field for calling smart contracts and for the callback uh, to calling smart contracts um, and they were using a JSON format. Uh, so, yeah, I think that the idea was just to specify this. And then we'd also want to make a registry which uh, contains information on the keys and the content of the memory field that people are using. Um, we're still thinking where the best place for that to go is. Um, but yeah, like I saw that uh, Strange Life, you guys are using the JSON format as well. Um, but yeah, like we'd obviously have the uh, contents of your um, strings uh, for your packet forward middleware and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just like the the context there. Great, thank you. Um, Aditya, anything you would like to add from the PR that you opened? No, as Susanna said, it's, it's really um, just a way to make sure that you know, it's it's already getting um, some use from different teams, right? Strange Love is using it for pack and forward middleware. Osmosis is using it. I believe Stride wants to use it for something as well. Um, so, with all of these different middleware, like we don't want a case where they're they're mutually incompatible um, because of the way that they've been mutating and modifying the memo field. So, this is just a way to make sure that they can all work together nicely and specify it clearly. Thanks. Um, so the PR is there. So if anybody would like to have a look, uh, and then um, Manuel also it really is just just so I data. It really is just a specification of what, at least from from what I've at least uh, Osmosis and Strangelove have already been doing this effectively. So um, it's a specification of what already exists um, as kind of the yeah. I guess it was a. Uh stride were like planning to use it for some um like routing basically and they were just using like a string so but then they're on board with the json format um but yeah it's kind of hard to know how many memo fields are being used there out in the wild already but uh as far as we're aware um yeah the one of these cases like on board with the best practices now yeah, cool. Um, thanks both. Uh, any questions about the memo? Yeah, the usual thing you want in a format like that 
is something that actually indicates what format it is instead of playing guess my syntax. Um, is there any place or standard way or, or way that we could squeeze in to signal that it is JSON format? Um, at least for now, we're kind of thinking that this will be the only format for executable memos. So I guess that would make sense if there's JSON okay. memo, proto memos, and, and other stuff, but I don't well, know. Well, if we can do, okay. So then we also have the same issue recursively is, um, is there any structure to the, the, the format to be used, you know, <clears throat> top level fields that indicate, you know, what type of payload it is and, and, and what version or any of that stuff? Or is right. that all ad hoc? Because you're going to have the same problem recursively. Um, so, uh, no, we're not bringing back a meetup. Um, <laughs> but uh, so at least for now, the structure that we've been thinking of is that um, the it's it's like basically a map of of these sort of reserved fields, and then what exists in the value of those reserved fields is kind of up to the specific, you know developers. Um, so uh, if if osmosis has uh, a certain key reserved for them, um, they have some some understanding of what's inside inside that uh, that key. Um, and at least for now as, as sort of a first step, this is kind of like what key is reserved for whom is, is sort of like an out of band uh, sort of thing um, that we're going to, uh, have in some key registry so that so that people aren't stepping on each other's toes. Yeah, so this is this is the like an example. Yeah, but if if there's a, a, like at least from 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 just thinking about it now, that seems to to work for us. But if you have a, a if you claim that it doesn't, then I would be happy to. It would just be easier for me to read read the rationale on the PR rather than reason about it right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, and then um, Manuel from Informal also opened a draft PR, a PR for uh, the broadcast channel. Uh, so also, if somebody would like to have a look, that's the link there. Uh, maybe Aditya, you also want to. Maybe give an overview. Um, yeah, well, this is just kind of, it's like a um, introducing a period that I think kind of makes sense uh, with the um, discussions that have been happening for privacy query and oracles and stuff like that. Um, it's like all channels right now are kind of this one to one um, end channel end. So there's one channel end on, a, on one side and, and it connects directly to a chain on the other side and we route packets through it. Um, but we're seeing sort of use cases that are more naturally fitted to one-to-many sort of channels where you can broadcast to an arbitrary number of, of subscribers. Um, so that's kind of, this is kind of like introducing that primitive at the ICS4 layer. Um, and yeah, I think that, that uh, Will kind of be a natural fit for for a lot of read only applications that are that are coming about. Um, so Manuel has done a great job specifying it. So um, if people are interested, they can take a look. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. So that's that's it for our update. So um, if we move to the update from the layer teams. We can start maybe with Hermes. Anything? Uh, uh, so for Hermes, uh, we're actually working on testing multi-version support for Tendermint. So version 0 0.34 and 0 0.37. And we're also switching the default trust uh, trust threshold for new clients. We're going from one third to two thirds. Okay, uh, the, the trust level, right? Uh, yeah, Okay. for new clients. For new clients. All right. So, so you, um, so you're testing this one as as well. Then it will be released at some point. With Hermes, 
any any anything from that from those tests uh, that is maybe worth sharing uh, is it working fine no problems uh it's still work in progress i need to check with uh, the person that's uh, implementing the test all right okay cool thanks anything anything else from hermes uh, nothing else all right thank you thanks uh, then from the relay team anything to share um trying to think you know we have a pr also to kind of dynamically support the the changes in the events um that i believe is right here um i think mm -hmm. we're just waiting to merge that the multiverse uh, yep exactly pretty much the same thing yeah. um other than that i don't think that we've had any other changes to the relayer um i know we also have a demo branch that we were kind of working on the localhost support stuff just to make sure the go relayer worked with it but other than that our our focuses have kind of been elsewhere lately okay mm -hmm. all right cool thanks um all right then um we move to the next section any other updates or topics that anybody would like to talk about Anything? Yeah, okay, that's it. Okay, cool. Nothing. All right, if there's nothing else for today, then we can wrap up. All right. Thanks, Carlos. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, See you in two weeks. Thanks. Thanks. Bye bye. Cheers,